Uh, we were talking about sensitivity of a transfer function with respect to parameter changes. And today I want to talk, go deeper into the stuff. Okay, so in this case, the transfer function T of S is GCG over 1 plus GCG, and the sensitivity S T G is given by del T over T over del G over G. respect to perturbations of okay so due to parameter perturbations in the original transfer function how is the closed loop system going to change over period of time so examples are you have an aircraft whose mass changes, a spacecraft, the mass changes pretty rapidly. I don't know if you know, but 95% of the mass of a spacecraft, a rocket, is actually the fuel which gets spent by the time it reaches the uh, outer space, which is only 400 or 500 kilometers above the Earth's surface. So within 10 to 15 minutes, it sheds uh, 70 to 80% of its mass. Okay, so that's a perturbation in the transfer function itself. Um, you have large transformers where uh, it undergoes the temperature variation. So peak summer temperature is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The peak, the lowest winter temperature would be minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That's going to change the resistance, inductance, and so on. Other material properties of the transformer. So the transfer function itself undergoes perturbations. Uh, you have an aircraft engine hit by a bird that undergoes a drastic perturbation in the transfer function. And so we want to understand how the closed loop system changes as you perturb the transfer function itself. And this is the expression that the sensitivity, uh, the, this is the expression for the sensitivity. So let's try and compute it. One thing to notice here is that you are taking a derivative with respect to a function, not a, you're taking derivative with respect to a function or a transfer function, not a scalar, okay? But it will turn out that the derivative is the same uh, as if g were a variable in this particular expression. So let me try to derive this expression from the first principles to show that it doesn't matter, in computing this derivative, it doesn't matter that g is actually a function and not just a variable. So del t over del g would be delta t over delta g. Um, so as delta g goes to zero, so let's try and compute it, so I have GCG plus delta G over 1 plus GCG plus 
delta G minus GCG over 1 plus GCG. So, this is my T plus delta T, this is my T. this gives me okay so can we compute it uh, let's try and do it uh, One plus G C G plus delta G and I have one plus G C G Let us try and uh, figure out which terms are going to get cancelled. G C square delta G Okay. G C delta G over the denominator. Yeah, this whole thing. Okay. Uh, I'm going to let delta G go to zero eventually, so uh, I'm not too worried about this term. So I want to see what all terms in the numerator are getting cancelled. So this gets cancelled. This gets cancelled. And then I have G C delta G, G C square delta G, and G C square G delta G. Okay. So I have delta T. I think you made a mistake with G C squared G delta G. Oh, is there a G here? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. Cancels. Right, so this also cancels. That's what I was thinking. There should be one more cancellation. Okay, so my delta T over delta G turns out to be G C over one plus G C.
Okay, so I'm going to let delta g go to zero because I'm interested in the derivative with respect to g. And I get this to be equal to gc over 1 plus gcg square. Okay, so even taking derivative with respect to function is as simple as taking the derivative with respect to a variable. It's not very different. Yes? So how are we saying the partial derivative of t with respect to g is the same as delta t over delta g? Because wouldn't that be- As equation? delta g goes to zero. As That's the definition. That's the definition of derivative, right? So this is limit delta g goes to zero delta t over delta g and that's equal to gc over 1 plus gcg squared. But that's not what sensitivity is. Sensitivity requires us to differentiate and then multiply it by g over t. So let's try and uh, compute what the sensitivity turns out to be. I'm going to erase this part. So S T G of S is equal to this expression. So let's compute it. G is G. One over T is What do I have? That is the sensitivity. Is that the same as the error? Well, it looks the same, but it's not the same. Well. Um, yes, the error is 1 over 1 plus GCG multiplied by R of S, but there is no relationship. This is sensitivity and that is error. So like it just happens to be the same, yeah. yeah. Just happens to be the same function um, for whatever reason. Okay. Now, if you want, let's say you are, um, op your normal operating conditions is 100 radians per second. You would want the sensitivity to be small at that particular operating condition, uh, because if it is large, then any change in the system itself would lead to very significant changes in the output. Uh, and the transfer function might even become unstable. So you have designed a controller for a nominal transfer function, G naught, and you want to make sure that you design your controller in a fashion that under the nominal operating conditions, the operating conditions that the transformer or the aircraft or the rocket that it's going to see during the normal course of operation is such that the sensitivity with respect to perturbation that you expect in the system should be as small as possible. And that is the topic of robust control system.
So what is robust control system design? So the goal is you have G P is the set of all possible realizations of the system. And the question robust control system design attempts to answer find a controller GC such that the performance specification is met for all the systems in P. Okay, so you have a transformer whose inductance, resistance, and other parameters change over a period of a season, but it could only be within some nominal region, right? So your resistance would change, let's say, from one kilo ohm to 1.5 kilo ohms, but it's not going to become one million kilo ohms or 0 0.01 kilo ohms in the, under the nominal operating condition. So you, what it leads to is set of all possible realizations of the system, which is if you vary, vary the parameter of the system over the, in, under the usual operating condition, that basically gives you a whole set of systems um, for every possible value of the resistance, capacitance, inductance, and so on. What you want to do as a controls engineer is to design a controller such that the performance specification and the, at the very least, stability of the system is maintained for all possible systems in the set P. So I have posted a video from GE uh, Global Research uh, website, uh, which basically says that when they build an aircraft engine, they do a variety of testing. Of course, the first test is under a normal operating conditions, how does the engine function? And of course, the controller takes care of all the situations. Then they put water in the engine and then they look at what the performance on the engine is, what the performance of the controller for the engine is under that particular realization. Then they put uh, 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 ice, what, what is that called, that icy rain. They push it through the engine and then that's one another realization of the system. And then they put a bird in the engine and that's another possible realization of the system. And for all those four possible realizations under, of course, and each realization has different varying levels of water, varying levels of ice sleet that they are passing through the engine and perhaps a couple of birds. Uh, for all those realizations, they want to make sure that the controller of the system takes care of any disturbance that happens and nothing blows up in a reasonable amount of time, well, in the, during the operations. Okay, and that is something that is studied under the umbrella of robust control design system, robust control system design. Um, and I'm going to talk about a very simple criteria to assess the stability of a, a third order system um, under a wide range of variations. So that is something I'm going to talk about on Monday next week. Um, with that, I'll end the course, and then on Wednesday, I'm going to go through an entire review lecture for the final exams, and then I'm going to post sometimes on Thursday when I could have additional office hours for the final exam. The final exam is on Friday next week, uh, 12 to 1.45 p.m., and I'm guessing this is the room, but I have to check. I'll make sure you guys are informed about it. Any questions on robust control system design? 
Yes. How far do we go with all possible realizations? Because like we'll like go pretty you far. Think, you can think up some pretty crazy things. Like uh, I think in terms of the aircraft engine, like yeah. Yeah. Well, not not too crazy. Like okay. you can't have a I don't know a meteorite striking the engine. So, <laughs> oh, I have a graded midterm. So Jeff.